starting a new painting and I kind of have a rough idea of what I want to do, um, though it's not completely thought out yet. Um, <clears throat> I got some of this handmade paper, which is amazingly beautiful. Um, I got a huge roll, a huge piece of it. I got a few, but here's the main, you know, it's, I don't know how big it is. It's pretty big. There's lots of it here. And I cut out that little section. And I'm thinking I will put it on this prepped encaustic board up in the corner here. It'll cover this stuff that somehow got off of my art table and into the <laughs> encaustic wax, which happens quite a bit. Probably find stray cat hairs in there and fuzz from the house and all kinds of lint and everything else, but I usually end up covering it up with some paint. So the color scheme I'm thinking of working with is this palette, and I save palettes on Pinterest um, because when I'm sitting down to do a painting, I can't think of which colors to use, and I just get overwhelmed because I have so many colors. So I have a whole Pinterest board full of colors um, and palettes and how they look well together, so I just kind of scrolled through and found this. And it looks stunning, so um, to figure out what I have in my um, art supplies that matches these colors. I think there's a glare. It's hard to see, but those are the colors. So um, I think what I'm going to do is start with some, um, let's see, I think I was going to go with some Alizarin Crimson and Quinacridon Magenta here. And the way I know what the colors look like is I created a little uh, chart for myself so I can see transparency of each of the colors that I have and um, what they actually look like because they certainly don't look like they do when they're in their little stick. Um, and then I, what I do is I take these sticks, this is um, Alizarin Crimson, and I put it in a little cat food container, empty of course, and mix it with a little bit of the encaustic medium, which makes the um, pigment go much further, and it's still incredibly brilliant, so um, it saves a little money to mix it with the um, plain encaustic medium. So I think what I had chosen here to try to match what's on my Pinterest board for that palette was the Quinacridone, where is it? Quinacridone Magenta, Quinacridone Red, the Alizarin Crimson, and, uh, oh yeah, the Alizarin Orange. Trying to make that yellow or gold, and I think the way I'm going to do it is with a combination of things. I've got these really cool um, pan, pan pastels. So this one is a light gold, and I think I'm going to put the light gold on these leaves. I did a little test. I have three colors here. I have a, a dark gold, a light gold, and a bronze. And I liked the way the light gold came out. So that's the color I'm going to use for the yellow in my color palette. Um, I also have a little bit of this um, Perlex Brilliant Gold, um, so I might use a little bit of this too. We'll see how things come out. So this will be a really neat project um, using several different um, items that I have in my studio. So. Um, we're going to use the glue, the glue, the, <laughs> the hot wax as glue, and um, hopefully that will cure it. So I've already put two layers of the clear encaustic medium as the base over the encaustic um, gesso. So the board's pretty well prepared. I think what I'm going to do now is take one of the darker colors. I've got the 
the alizarin crimson and the quinacridone magenta and they're nice and melted um, i think what i'm going to do is just kind of paint them on here and use that to um place you know to place this in and then fuse it Do a nice little and then that is not going to stay on like that that would eventually just chip off so I'm going to fuse it Sorry to be so precise when you're just going to blow it all over the place anyway, so. So that's kind of a harsh edge there, which obviously will get softened up because we'll be adding many more layers to this. So. Okay, so that is adhered on the bottom only. And then we'll be putting another layer over it. And this is where all the experimentation is going to come in with all the different colors and um, how they interact. What I'm thinking of doing is really thinning down um, the crimson. So I may actually just apply a couple layers of the plain encaustic medium first. That'll help uh, hold it down. It's a really neat way that's. Uh, and changing the plants of the leaves. Ah, oh, for some reason that just looks really delicious to me. <laughs> Probably because I'm hungry. Um, it's like cookies or honey soaked cookies. So, what I'm going to do is start with this plantidone. Pretty bright. Ah, this is the fun of plastics. When you've got this stuff moving around like this, you can get it to do so many different things. Uh, the way that's splitting, oh, that is just, to me, is amazing. I just love that. Um, and we get to learn the different colors. They all have such different properties and behave so differently because they're all um, minerals. You know, they're all made up. They've got a chemistry and they all act differently um, when you combine them in different ways. So it's always a learning experience. Which makes this so much fun. Wow, that's pretty amazing those colors. They're crazy. I love that. Okay, so now I've got all this um, space over here and here and I'm probably going to build a couple more of these um, 
Let's call them poppies. And I'll have a couple of those there. And we'll see how that works. I'm gonna give this a second to cool because I kind of like the shape of it. I don't want to blow it apart too much. If I keep going with it, it's just gonna end up scattering everywhere and not. way that looks. You know, poppies have a center with all those little poppy seeds, so that might be another little thing to add that'll give it some definition. I was um, remembering that the um, this alizarin orange, which is a transparent color, um, when it's layered with other colors, sometimes it takes on a weird look. Like it doesn't always blend wonderfully um, with other colors. And I got a little bit against the diazosine purple, and I just didn't like the look of it. So I took this tool and just kind of um, gently scooped it out. I waited it until it had hardened just a little bit. It was still soft, and gently scooped it out. Um, put a little bit more encaustic medium in there and then put a layer of the quinacridone magenta on that. So that looks like it It worked. And I do like the way these colors just kind of, um, almost like in the um, palette image that I'm using, they, they kind of follow this neat line next to each other. And I can maybe try to accomplish a little bit more of that. Um, by carefully um, blowing the wax apart. Um, but you have to be careful because when it's this wet and you move too close with the heater, it can just, just make a big hole and ruin all of the patterns that you have there. So I'm always trying to be a little bit careful with that. So now I think I might add those little poppy, um, poppy seeds. come back and look at it and there'll be some obvious thing that I'll want to change I'm sure and then I will touch it again. It'll be done. So thanks for joining in. I hope you enjoyed this and um, next time I'll try something completely different with the paper because I'm sure there's a million other things I can do with it. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.